بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد A goal without a plan is just a wish The people of Iman are amal motivated akhirat motivated They have a goal they have an ambition they have focus they have direction and they have a plan to achieve their target so a believer is always target orientated example my salah what is the level of my salah with regards to number one do i read salah with all the masail the rules the regulations if i don't know where am i going to to learn then all the adab, the etiquettes, the sunan, the mustahabat, etc. Then the khushu and concentration in salat, how much effort needs to be made to perfect the salah. Because I know that Allah has said that the successful believers are those who have khushu, concentration in their salah. So there is no deficiency from my side. What do I need to achieve to reach my target. So part of deen is preparing for akhirat and how in that akhirat as well, how we can be successful. Allah has created this world, the dunya. So in the worldly terms, what preparations, what effort needs to be made to see that I achieve my target. Batil has understood what effort has to be made and the principle is, it is more important to outthink your enemy than to outfight them. So they've made search, they've planned, they've plotted. So outwardly a person may seem Muslim, but inwardly they've caused a revolution. So uh, excellence is achieved by not only physical effort but using the intellectual power, the mind power. So as people of Iman we also need to uh, use our brain capacity and that's what Malan Sayyid Khan Sabrahmatullah you say that the people nowadays use log apni jaan mal or wak dete hai like in dir al dimaag nahi dete they give the 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 wealth, they give their body, they give their time, but the heart and soul they don't give that. So Deen requires for us to be dedicated not just externally but the mind, the heart, the soul also needs to be engaged. And if we see conditions and halat then we need to go back to the Ahl Ilm, to the Ulama Haqq, to the Ulama Rabbaniyin those scholars will take us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and investigate this is happening in the ummah what's the root cause this has happened to me what's the root cause what amal do I need to do what do I need to change as an ummah what do we need to change so if we go back to the root cause for example Nabi alayhi salatu was has mentioned إِذَا تَبَايَعَتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَأَخَذْتُمْ بِأَذْنَا بِالْبَقَرْ so Ya Nabi alayhi salatu was salam is, is highlighting a, a very important point and, 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 and a lesson for the ummah to, to, to teach us and, 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 and to identify the root problem. So when, when the ummah, when your transactions will be full of riba, full of interest, which nowadays people buy on the credit card, don't pay on the correct time and then there's interest on premiums and they go into a spiral, a whirlwind which just sucks them and absorbs them. So uh, buying anything on budget facility is haram, it's a clear-cut masla. You cannot buy your home on or vehicle with conventional banking that charge interest. That is declaring war with Allah. Now, there's no statement, there's no bayan, there's no lecture that can describe a person declaring war with Allah. The magnitude 
and the scale when one declares war with Allah the different denominations and possibilities of destruction are unlimited that should be a sufficient deterrent but it's normal buy a house go to the bank take out a home loan take out a vehicle finance and we are paying interest it is inappropriate we, haram is there but for a believer to go close to those avenues and nowadays we have the Islamic finance models we have the Sharia compliant models why are we not adopting that so the warning is when you will get involved in interest and when you will hold on to the tails of cows means you will get engaged in your businesses you will engage in in your professions and you will be stuck onto that and that acquiring of dunya that amassing of wealth that greed and the desire to further your dunya that is sufficient the consequences of is وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادَ and you will abandon striving in Allah's path so because of the dunya and you're struggling for dunya you don't want to lose that your love for that is intense so to compromise and to jeopardize this acquiring of dunya and, and, and climbing the ladder you will abandon the deen of Allah striving for the deen of Allah Sallata Allahu Alaikum Dhullan Allah will subjugate disgrace on you so there will be disgrace there will be humiliation there will be dishonor due to these causes here لا ينزعوا حتى ترجعوا إلى دينكم that's disgrace on a small scale on a big scale micro level macro level the Muslim Ummah will be disgraced they will have no honor they will have no respect and the hell is only to come back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, we have to identify the murder the disease and now start treating this sickness success is only in deen happiness is only in deen contentment is only in deen and we need to have this yaqeen we need to strive and we need to sacrifice we can look for solutions everywhere else but there'll be only turmoil and distress in, in, in our everyday lives in whatever situation they say there was a wife who woke up in the middle of the night to your husband sobbing uncontrollably he was downstairs she, she put on a, 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 a gown to go and investigate the chain what's happening she got down honey what's so wrong there's a problem tell me you can confide in me so husband was sobbing and then he just said you know what remember 20 years ago your 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 father threatened me when he found out that we had a, a relationship and uh, he gave me an ultimatum throw me in jail or i marry you she said yeah i remember so uh he said, well, by tonight I would have been released. I would have been released from prison. If I had a 20-year jail sentence, tonight was a night I would have been freed. So, so families, husband and wife, parents and children, on every level there's turmoil. And uh, such turmoil, talking about marriage, they say nowadays the marriage has come to that stage where the first show of marriage, the man speaks and the woman listens. In the second year the woman speaks and the man listens in the third year both speak and the neighbors listen and in the fourth year the lawyers speak and the judge listens so turmoil everywhere we have to change our focus we shouldn't be get caught up especially now with the global st structure becoming so small with the internet where everything has shrunk and information is relayed so easily people get overwhelmed by the news and the propaganda houses on a turn we say with regards to this in this in those days that 
you should say the degree of reliance on newspaper reports is greater, is much more intense. We have more yaqeen in these media houses than what the Dalail of Sharia, what Allah and His Rasul have said. And their mindset, they sensationalize things, they exaggerate it. They, it's complete distortion and uh, it, it's full of lies, but, but we still believe all these lies and this deception. So, so how, how big can a conspiracy theory be? So people just brush it off, no, it's conspiracy theory, but look into it, get into it. We, we, we've heard of the WEF agendas, they, they've got processes. To, to it's it's organized crime. It's it's a group of technocratic elites who've, who've got their own usuls and principles, and they're promoting their agendas. They're saying that these uh, agendas uh, are there, and 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 what is it? Number one, they they want to infiltrate governments. So. Uh, they, they've got it. Part of the agenda is to capture governments globally and uh, through, through these systems, part of the UN is part of their control mechanisms. Likewise, they've got other mechanisms in place, civil society organizations, which is called CSOs. So uh, these, uh, one, one research, researcher has mentioned with regards to this, from, from Harvard uh, School that what we've done now is what they've achieved is they've penetrated the global cabinets of countries through the WEF and through the YGL which is the Young Global Leaders. So the Young Global Leader program is basically uh, indoctrinating their principles and they want to create world leaders who are answerable to them. Amongst them, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin, the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, the list goes on, Angela Merkel, Germany. And it's funded by who? the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Google. So that's part of the agenda which they've achieved already many countries. And if you oppose, we take you out. The number two sound wave mind control. So this is uh, a type of non-invasive neuromodulation and they're calling it the new age of healthcare. And uh, thus, mind control using sound waves in the wrong hands could cause, obviously it's been engineered for the wrong hands. So a professor at the Oxford University uh, describes this uh, controlling activity, neural uh, activity. So they will direct mechanical vibrations to a certain region in the brain and uh, they are saying that they'll see a day where scientists will be able to control what a person sees in their mind, what they see. They just need to send the right waves at the right place in the brain. So they, they actually harness in mind control, the Dajali system. One is Dajjal, like we said, governments. Secondly, controlling people. And uh, the target is 2030 to have this mind control technology, which obviously will be unregulated and abused. Number three, pulls with microchips in them. So uh, at the WEF meeting, the CEO of Pfizer, he described the uh, approval of a electronic pill, a biological chip which will enter your body and will send signals. So this ship here will, will, will be there to control people. And it will it'll, it'll relay information. Number four, lockdowns. 
So uh, from movement restrictions to banning international travel to clothing, cloth, closing schools and businesses to, and we can see, I, we, we witnessed it with our own eyes and, and, and this is a control mechanism. So uh, although, although so many jobs are lost, so much suicides have been committed, people have, have mortality rate has increased, but they, the WEF is saying we would love to see a COVIDian society become permanent. What does it mean? Like how COVID was there and they had mechanisms in place to control people. They want that to perpetuate. So, uh, number five, part of their plans is as well is to, to monitor and control people. So, part of their technology is to identify people through their heartbeat. So, NASA has invented a, a system using laser that can identify people by their heartbeat. So, the WEF has been promoting people in schools, in universities to go more in the digital world and... Uh, they want the, the classroom environment to focus on virtual reality and artificial intelligence. So when they say they reskilling, they upskilling, and they pump in a lot of money in that, they want to do away with textbooks, notebooks, your pens, your pencils, boards, and they want to digitize education. And, and, and watch it unfold, watch it unfold. And that will be connected to the virtual environment and the metaverse. And we can see that materializing nowadays. What the world, the Jal will promise you a Jannat, but it is Jahannam hellfire. Number six, the Great Reset. I'm just running through each point quickly. We need to do our own research. We need to be vigilant. We need to take lesson as well. So they say in the Great Reset and, and the future global plan and, and the business models which they want the world to be common is uh, the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, that's from the physical, digital and all biological spheres. So the, the, the technology revolution Will, will include all surveillance systems, stability to control the entire digital structure. And uh, people will be bound by these digitized platforms. So, uh, if, if, if we look at the, the modality of, of technology and how fast it is moving, we can really understand how they've gotten into and it's a topic on its own of how Satanism and how Shaitan has opened up this platform and we discussed it briefly uh, in, 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 in the Kiyama series and the prepping in the Apocalypse series and the survival guide of, of what Amal the Ummah should be doing. So. They have their planning and, 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 and it's fitting into place. What are we doing? Then number seven, they want to recalibrate free speech. So in one of the Davos meeting, a uh, Australian e-safety commissioner brought out the point for a recalibration of free speech. And that's defining the whole range of human rights. There will be no human rights actually. Uh, it, it, it'll be non-existent. They don't want it to exist and you can't post anything on Facebook, YouTube, etc. There's certain words which flags and your blog, your post gets blocked. So they're already monitoring and regulating free speech and they don't want you to have a voice. Number eight, digital passports. So your digital passports, they want to embed it. You will have microchips implanted 
and uh, the beginning of that, the prelude was your vaccine passports. So the digital IDs, which are monitored, and the end game is the CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency. So uh, once this becomes widespread, they control you, they control your finances, and uh, then the last step comes. So in your clothing, you will have microchips that will be monitoring you. In your gadgets, there'll be microchips. And the last one is to chip you. They want to chip humanity. So tracking and tracing is important to control people. Why? Because those that rebel and revolt, they need to take you out. So all of this, what they're talking about 220, uh, which we see in the start of and the collapse of societies. They say in 2025, they'll have these chips ready and 2030, they want uh, implementation and fully fledged systems in place. Then the smartphones in your body. So uh, now we have cell phones, but besides your clothing being digitalized, they want you to be a smartphone. So uh, the CEO of Nokia, in 2022 Davos meeting, he was talking of having this integration. So the in, uh, integrating, so we moved to 5G, now the 6G networks, which is just uh, in its infancy. But they saying that uh, this technology will make smartphones completely obsolete and the physical, they want to join just here, the physical world and the digital world. And it'll be built in you. So transhumanism as well, Kiyama series, go listen to that as well. And that's how they want to control the human population. So uh, Elon Musk with Neuralink, they want to surgically implant microchips that'll connect your brain will synchronize with the AI. And uh, that's where they will take transhumanism, where devices and gadgets will be implanted. And that's when they will able to manipulate humanity on a global level. And the last one, which is a famous statement, you will own nothing and be happy, the great reset, the new normal. And that's the part of the 2030 agenda. So uh, you'll have to say, I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own anything or clothing. And uh, shopping will be a distant memory in 2030. Why? Because you will loan everything. You will own nothing, but you will loan everything. And then you'll become a slave. So it will be services that will be rendered They'll have drones to deliver items to you. And uh, all, if we go into it, and that's a topic on its own, of these uh, multi-billionaires and where they invest in their monies nowadays. So they will have these corporations that will control the entire system. So they are moving to this, this agenda so we've mentioned 10 points. There are many other points as well, which they want to implement as the people of Iman. Firstly, we have to spiritually prepare, amal-wise prepare, and asbab-wise as well prepare. Wa akhiru dawana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.